Good morning, everyone. I'll try not to bore you too much. My name is Stephen Galt. I am a victim survivor of the Ennis Gillen bomb in 1987 on Remembrance Sunday, in which claimed the lives of 11 innocent civilians. The 12th victim, my old school headmaster, Ronnie Hill, died after 13 years in a coma. My father, Samuel, or Sammy as he's better known by, was standing next to me when the bomb exploded. He died instantly at the scene. He was 49 years of age. In 1987, Remembrance Sunday fell on the 8th of November. That morning, both my father and my mother, Gladys, and myself left home together, as we did every year, to go to the town's annual Remembrance Service. Little did we know that it would be the last time we would leave the, our home together. We drove a short distance to St. McCartan's Cathedral, where we dropped my mother off. She was doing usher in her capacity as UDR sergeant. We parked the car outside the town library, which was very close to the church. We, my father thought that this would be a good idea because getting parked anywhere near Belma Street would have been a nightmare. I remember it so clearly, Dad and myself walking along Queensmouth Road, talking the whole distance. I had a very close relationship with my father, particularly after he had only retired from the RUC and medical grounds some 18 months previous. We took up our position in front of the reading rooms so we could have a good view of the parade. I was standing between my father and Mr. Ted Armstrong, who was reserved in the RUC. While we were waiting for the parade to start, an RUC officer walked past me. He greeted my father and I remember asking him who was he. I never got the answer. It was 10.43 a.m. The IRA had planted a bomb behind us in the reading rooms. I never heard the bomb. All I remember was being pushed forward. I was, I was unconscious, not for long, a minute or so. It was like walking up, waking up in the middle of a horror movie. There was an eerie silence, dust everywhere, fit in my mouth. I could hardly see in front of me with the dust. I, I can still remember the doping, choking sensation from the dust and the rubble. I clearly remember looking to my side, where my dad had been standing next to me. His decapitated body was lying on my feet. I knew straight away that he was dead for the wounds he suffered to his head. I knew he could not have survived. The only reason I knew him, because he was buried, was with his signature shiny shoes. He was always immaculately dressed. There was rubble lying all over the top of us. I was trapped under the wall of the reading rooms. Someone helped me from under the rubble and pulled me out over the railings. I was in a daze. I was in shock. I remember staring at the mayhem. I couldn't believe what had just happened. There was people running around, crying, screaming, calling out for their loved ones by name. There was a scene of carnage, dead and dismembered bodies lay everywhere. It is a miracle that I survived. Both gentlemen on either side of me killed instantly. I suffered head injuries, mouth concussion, cuts some bruising. To this day, 25 years later, I still have a piece of rubble in my forehead. The day before the bomb, my father bought me a new leather coat. And much to my mother's disgust, I was worried that something. My mother was of the opinion that a leather coat was not appropriate dress code for a member in service. But I was just 18, and I thought I knew, I knew everything. After the explosion, there was very little left of the coat on my back. It had been shredded by the blast. Doctors believe that that coat saved my life. After my treatment in the hospital, I was discharged a few hours later as the doctors felt compassion to my pleas not to admit to the ward. I just wanted to get home. I wanted to go home, go to sleep, and wake up from the nightmare. I find it very difficult to grieve at my father's wake and funeral. I was still in shock. I was in denial. I wanted to stop time from moving forward. My mother was fantastic the way she handled herself with dignity. One minute she had a husband, a good life. You could say that was everything was perfect. And that split second was gone. My mother sadly lost her life, her fight for, with cancer in December 27, and um, 20 years, sorry, after my father's anniversary. Two weeks after the bomb, I developed psoriasis, which over the years has developed into psoriatic arthritis. 98% of my body is covered in severe psoriasis to this day. I live with a constant reminder of that fateful day. I live in constant pain, both physically and emotional. I've always wanted to join the RUC. I wanted to follow in the footsteps of my hero, my dad. I was rejected on medical grounds because of my skin condition. 
So not only did the IRA rob me of my father, but they robbed me of my livelihood, my career <coughs> prospects, my opportunities in life. <coughs> the IRA robbed my father of his basic human right to life. Where is the justice and all that? In 1987, Margaret Thatcher, who was Prime Minister at the time, proclaimed to the world that no stone shall remain left unturned to find out who was responsible for the bomb. To this date, no one has ever been convicted of the brutal bombing in Anskill on Remembrance Sunday 1987. For 25 years, I have wanted to know the truth about my father's murder. I have come here for justice for the Anskill families and others who have lost loved ones that were murdered at the hands of terrorists. This is why I have become involved with justice for innocent victims of terrorism, to help in their, my quest for justice. I don't want special treatment. I don't deserve it, like anybody, as far as anybody else is concerned. What I would demand is an equality of victims. I have a basic human right to learn the truth of what happened in 1987. And I feel that justice has to be served in whatever form or shape it may be. Thank you.